Tom's home. <laughs> Out never never time. Oh gee, baby. So <laughs> on my Instagram, I just posted all those cute students who were behind us for for. And you know what? I didn't even realize that all that was going on while we were on TV. <laughs> they rushed you up can't behind hear you. Them. Yeah. yeah, they Every rushed up. Then, Probably good you didn't realize we had it. An yes. Olaf one <laughs> What's time. going on? Over there? I mean, I'm sure he wasn't the real Olaf. Oh, was he out right? there? How do you know? Well, I don't know. He was pounding on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, uh, dude, security doesn't like that. Yeah. It is getting cold. Let it go. <laughs> There's a bunch of people still behind you, but it was uh, very distracting during the show because they were pointing at you and thumbs up. And oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I can't see it. I love the love, though. Every now and then I would look across the couch and I would see Rachel and she'd do this. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's really nice. Well, I guess they're probably out for school now, right? So yeah, they're not. I hope so. I mean, hopefully they're not Lisa, skipping school. I hope they're out for school. Because if not, we just got them in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Called out. <laughs> or a plane hooking in the city. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, all right, so let's hit the live chat. And Stephen Hayes, I want to spend just a little time loving on you. You were. Gary, <laughs> <laughs> are you watching? <laughs> Is that your wife? Okay. Um, no, I, I'm loving on your writing. Thank you. And uh, for the Weekly Standard, you wrote an article that I sent out to the team. It was riveting on uh, President Obama's take on helping the world versus what his take is on Syria. What happened? It's, it is extraordinary. This has been sort of the speech that President Obama gave to the nation from National Defense University in 2011 when he was justifying the uh, strikes on Libya. Um, he talked not only about why he thought we needed to intervene in Libya, but he gave a, a sort of a rousing address about America's role in the world and the responsibility that America has alone to help prevent atrocities um, like the one that he said he prevented in Libya in Benghazi right. at the time. And you look back on that speech and, and the kinds of things he said were, you know, we were going to, the United States and its allies were going to save hundreds of people from certain death in Benghazi. Uh, and, and you look at Syria now and it's, you're talking about nearly uh, half a million people having been killed, millions upon millions of Have refugees. The and video? the president says the other day, this is what keeps me up at night. I'm mm. sorry. It's just hard. But, but hard it's to the reason that makes me so mad because I truthfully believe, and you tell me if I'm wrong, I believe he didn't do anything in Syria because of the Iran deal. Correct. And so, mm. I mean, that is a really, I mean, and, and the Iran deal is something that we don't even that. think is in our national security interest. Right. Mm. So this is a legacy item that he sacrificed millions of lives to. And I don't understand why the press doesn't talk more about this because you know that if this had been reversed in terms of political parties that um, that would be talked about. The That's stories, it. yeah, the stories that people could write. I mean, Samantha Power, who literally wrote a book about preventing right. genocide as, right. uh, as U.N. ambassador, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. she's, she's sending out tweets. And uh, on the one hand, you sort of feel bad for her. She, she, it's not in her power to do anything about it. On the other hand, the, the sort of impotence of the administration by having her send she out tweets. Out? Just, and Susan Powers but the thing out? I don't understand is 300 no. people no, die. No, okay. But the, the, I have been so saddened by the apathy towards what's happening in Syria. And if you consider yourself a bleeding heart liberal who cares about the world, who cares about humanitarian crises, is that everything except if it's happening in the Middle East? Outpouring for 300 people dying in Paris, not that that wasn't warranted and tragic in and of itself. Half a million people are being slaughtered. There's a video that is just heartbreaking of children not crying when bombs are exploding around them because yeah. they're so conditioned yeah. to it right now. They're it is sensitive. hell on earth and nobody cares. But I, think you know what? I, I think it's less about apathy and more about ignorance. That could be true. I mean, look yes. at what some of the mainstream media choose to cover and spend their time on. And you point to one example of terror, and that's legitimate, however, pales in comparison. But it's what we call in journalism the low-hanging fruit. It's easier yeah. to cover what happened in Paris because you can take a nonstop flight there. And, you know, you have protective forces on the ground. You go to Syria, and your six isn't covered, baby. Mm -hmm. But why You're is out it, there. Harris, why is it that it, even if he didn't want to get involved with picking a side. Why didn't they, in the very minimum, just create a safe zone? Like, yeah. I, I don't understand zone. that. Yes, where these people could go and be safe until it was over. I don't understand. Because so that would have meant doing some kind of deal with Russia, doing some kind of deal with other countries. And are we impressed by his ability to do that? I cut you off. Oh, go no, ahead. no, no. I was just going to say to, to Rachel's earlier point, that kind of goes to the conversation that we were having on air as well about him doing things in the name of legacy that sort of fly in the face of common sense and fail to keep America safe. 
And to your point about, you know, the reasons behind not wanting to get involved in Syria, I mean, it's the same thing with Guantanamo Bay as well. The same thing with failing to leave a status of forces agreement in Iraq. And you look at all these different examples of him, uh, you know, doing these things for legacy safe, uh, sake that have really made America less safe. Uh, and, and we it, it know this. It really goes through decision making. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a really important point. And, and we're not speculating here. I mean, this is something that we right. know. Remember, Ben Rhodes was recorded on an audio yeah. recording telling people, uh, telling Democratic partisans that the president saw the Iran deal as the Obamacare of the second term and that it was the top priority. And we've seen whether it's giving Russia a free hand in the region, whether it's uh, allowing Iran to continue its disruptive behavior there and beyond, continuing to fund terrorism, knowing, remember John Kerry said that we knew that some of the money that Iran was going to get from the deal would be used for terrorism and we let them have it anyway. All of these things uh, came before the Iran deal because the president saw it as. And what is it about the Iran deal that is so like, you know, important to him? Why is he willing to sacrifice everything on this deal that many of our allies think is not going to make them safer in the Middle East? I mean, I think he he has a tremendous uh, he has tremendous confidence in his own ability uh, to get things done, and he came in, I think, with a certain worldview that. If he were, if, if we were only nice, remember the United States were to lead by example, to pull back from the world that others would follow. And I think it's just deeply and hopelessly naive. And unfortunately, I think we're going to be paying for it for a long time to come. Kate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five says that, Lisa, you need to hire me as your agent. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to advocate for you. Does that, that mean regular. I'm not doing things right? <laughs> no, I want you to be a, a regular, I, I guess, at every sense of the word. And Stephen Hayes, um, She's employed writes, here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I can be mad at the 10%. <laughs> she needs right? to be more, I guess. <laughs> Says, you ladies are awesome. Tweeting it. I know, right? You ladies are awesome. Steve Hayes is the best. Ooh. I got so, a lot so my of, wife uh, is watching. Yeah. Right? I got I a lot know. of tweets. I'm just sharing a little bit of love her. here. But we got a lot of tweets about Steve's great hairline, too. About yes, all your great do. hair that you have. So women getting, are fans. getting grayer by the day. That's <laughs> sure. One thing that we haven't been talking about, and I saw it kind of, and I'm going to switch over now to uh, to Facebook Live because I like to do to do both of these. One thing that we haven't talked about is something that Donald Trump says he's going to do in his first 100 days, and that's Obamacare. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's what is it on the back burner now, or are we just not talking about it because of all the foreign stuff? That's well, didn't I, th- I think uh, Priebus had also recently said in an interview that you know that's sort of the the prime objective, but I, I do think it's going to be. Uh, you know, complicated in the sense of, you know, one, there needs to be agreement and consensus and sort of, you know, what the replace is going to look like uh, for Republicans. And, and two, you know, it, it took the Democratic Party a long time to even get Obamacare through, right, without a single Republican vote. So, you know, I do think there's going to be a lot of weight legwork that needs to get done by Republicans, but they absolutely have to follow through on this. I mean, Republicans have been promising voters uh, for, you know, ever since uh, the, you know, ever since Obamacare that the we're going to repeal it. If they don't get this done, I, I mean, I, I don't know how anyone ever gets elected. So again. I saw the schedule for Congress, um, which I look at very intensely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm not going to see my husband for like three months, I think. Um, it's that. What? It's like every, like usually there, there's like a day on either side of the week that we get to see. I mean, it is Aww. packed solid because they know that they have just a limited yeah. time yeah. to get this stuff through. Really? And so they're going to keep them in it there and they're going to work, work, work and get this stuff I, in. I, I do want to give a shout capital. out to you, though, because I, I know your husband's going to be working hard on the Hill. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, how many children do you have now? Eight. <laughs> okay. You might be working harder than they are. Well, that's why. Uh-huh. <laughs> when the government shuts down, it's women like me going, get it done and get it <laughs> That's how government it. works. Uh, oh, is that how it works? Oh, I'm so glad we the know. wives. <laughs> what is it? Uh, happy wife, happy life. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, it just showcases the sacrifice wives absolutely. make, too. I mean, obviously, my mother did the same thing. And it's so, people have no idea what family sacrifice. Eight children. Children, you at home with them. You're not going to see your husband for three months. I mean, there should be more thanks kids. P- politicians Aww. get so much hate all the time. And <laughs> we got a crowd for the serious spa day for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, I don't know, on a different it. planet or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah well, good. great to have you. Yes. Good to Thank have you, you too. Thank it's so much you. fun. Yes. And uh, a lot of big news topics going into the end of the year. Sure. Yes. Yeah. More to come afterwards, too. You got it. We'll be right here. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay.